my channel. My name is Bakana. for those of you that are new. Make sure you give this video a like, comment down below, and subscribe for more if you're not already subscribed. Also, please turn on the notification bell. You can find it if you look down here to your left. Yeah, right there, the notification bell. Make sure you tap it and click the one that says all so you never miss a video. Hey guys, I'm so excited to share that this part of the video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, video, freelancing, and much more. You can learn how to make artwork for loved ones, how to take care of your new plans, how to edit like a pro, and create an online presence. You can even learn how to make the perfect holiday gift for your special someone. Skillshare offers creative classes designed for real life and all the circumstances that come with it. These lessons can help you stay inspired, express yourself, and introduce you to a community of millions. Discover new talents and widen your perspective with Skillshare. I've been learning how to increase my video editing skills and how to build my creative career. If you want to join a group of learning creatives, make sure you click the link in the description box. A yearly subscription is less than $10 a month. The first thousand people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. So this video, I have my computer right here. I have a note system right now, so I'm really trying to follow through with that. The video, as you can see by the title, is called Differences and Similarities Between Jamaica and the United States of America. So all of these were just some rough outlines that I collected. You can also find that in the description box down below. Uh, I tried to be as organized as possible when it came to creating this list. They're not in any specific order, but I do have subheadings, as you can see when you click the link in the description, when you click the, to open the description box. Um, I just want to say that if you have any more differences and similarities, we can compile them down below. We can have some discussions in the comments. We can also have a part two to this video, so we'll see how that goes. But for now, I'll jump right into the video. So number one is school system. And I titled it, the school system is very different. Uh, if you don't know, Jamaica, well, I'm not gonna be like, you know, very specific, but you can start from kindergarten all the way to upper sixth form, which I was in class today and I was listening to everybody talk about their school experience, so I was picking up a lot of information. But for Jamaica, you have seven years of high school. If you go to upper sixth, so just imagine that seven years of high school. If you're in America and you went to school in America, then you know you have four years of high school in America. But the reason being, and I'm not gonna be like very in depth for this point as I could be and for the other points, but I just speaking from experience or from what I've heard recently, um, and yeah, experience. <laughs> for America, you can, you start high school, the majority of high schools, I'm not sure I haven't been to all, but the majority of high school starts at um, grade nine. So it'd be grade nine, 10, 11, 12, which you'll be, if you know this, you'll be a freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. And that's the high school system in America. Jamaica, I'm not sure. I never went to high school in Jamaica, so the high school system is very, I don't, I don't know it. <laughs> I just know you can go first form. No, you can, you go all the way from grade, you can go all the way from grade seven, which is when you start high school in Jamaica to upper six, but I don't think everyone goes to upper six. So that's just, you know, my thing. And I don't think there's a name for each, <laughs> each grade, like how um, America has it, but yeah, it's and not uniform and no uniform. So uh, yeah, in Jamaica, the majority of the schools, if not all of them, have to wear uniform and you normally have like some type of school logo, which in America you do too, but it's not as emphasized as in Jamaica. Like, you know how they have like Casey and they have Calabar and they have Wilmers and these are all the ones that I know of. Um, there are obviously more. You have Troy, you know? You have um, St. Catherine High. In America, you do have uniforms, but you also don't have to wear uniforms. There are schools where you're not 
required to wear a uniform but every single school has a dress code you can't just show up in anything a lot of things that you're seeing are in some like I don't know. That does not happen in metropolitan cities. It barely happens in the suburbs. It's some middle of nowhere a high school that you're seeing girls wear some booty shorts too and all these crop tops. A um, good amount of schools, you cannot do that. There's a dress code. But you have military schools as well. Obviously, they have the uniform that they have to wear. And you have some religious schools, which it's not a uniform, but you know, there's a more, uh, what would I say, appropriate when it comes to that specific school type of attire you would normally wear to school. Types of schools. So obviously in Jamaica, majority of schools are like private, private schools in the sense that you have to pay for them. Because when I say private in America, private schools, you pay for private schools, public schools, you don't. So that's why I'm saying it like that. But you do have prep schools and then, I just know prep schools, I went to prep schools but you have different types of schools in jamaica it's just it still falls under that private pay for me type system in america though you have a lot <laughs> a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot you have public schools private schools charter schools magnet schools religious schools military schools etc 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 because there's more to the list but i can speak for public schools they're state run state state ran institutions i guess Private schools, they um, are in the name private. Charter schools now, charter schools are a bit different. If you want to search out more information on charter schools, please just go to Google, type in Google and type in charter schools and there you go, you have the information that you're looking for. With all of this, the list is down below. If you wanna get more detailed, you can do your own research. You can just go down to my description box, check out the specific headline or um, bullet point that you want to address, copy it, paste it into Google, and boom. <laughs> We're going to move on to club activities because schools is getting pretty long. This is actually the last one that falls under schools. So club activities, I remember in high school that we have so many clubs and a lot of other schools have a lot of different types of clubs. Uh, obviously you probably have clubs in um, Jamaica, but when I'm telling you the, the high schools in Jamaica have high schools in America, I'm so sorry, <laughs> have so many different types of clubs. Listen, you can have a chess club, which I'm pretty sure a lot of countries have their respective chess clubs in high school. You can also have a Harry Potter club. You can have a Pokemon card collecting club. You can have knitting club swimming club which is not a part of the swim team it's their own swim club you can have a gardening club you can have something even more specific and you know have a club on jamaica jamaica club uh, a uk club there is so much you can have a club on the language that they spoke in avatar the movie with the green people um there's just so much uh like i said i would really appreciate you guys if you left a comment down below if you know of very different clubs that Jamaican high schools and or universities have, leave them down below. Let's talk about some fun stuff that we can share with one another. All right, so the next thing, which is number two on my list of differences and similarities would be the social life. I'm gonna say this to say Jamaica doesn't have this in America, I have this. Obviously America's a larger company. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm just cut all out. <laughs> all right, so number two would be social life. So the first thing that I have on the list is things you can do varies on where you live. So obviously that's a similarity and a difference because in Jamaica, the thing that you're gonna do um, in your social time in Kingston, St. Catherine, even in um, Mandeville and Negril is gonna be completely different than something that you would do in a smaller community like maybe uh like troy or i know names but i'm tr i'm telling you it's just not coming to me right now <laughs> or brown town or you know somewhere small there's very different type of social activities that's the same in america if you're in new york city you can't expect to have the same type of social life as someone that's in the backwoods of alabama you get me it's just very completely um, different types of cities, the density is different, the amount of things that one person can do in one city would be completely different. And that's like I said, the same for Jamaica and America. 
However, the difference is that America, there's much more things that you can do in terms of like, you can, there's some sort of museums that you can go to in America that are just so interactive and fun and just very out there and different. And there are a lot of interactive cafes that you can go to where maybe you can do a sip and paint at a cafe or you can go to pottery classes. And that's for the most part very accessible to a good majority of Americans. If you're bringing in, you know, a decent income, then yeah, you can put aside money and say, oh, you know, me and my friends this weekend are, we're gonna go to the city, we're gonna go into, you know, da 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 and do this and that. But in Jamaica, I feel like we are so limited. They, um, AC Lounge has just become really popular place where people go and hang out. And then I know you can go to the Bob Marley Museum and you can go to, let's say, you know, Rose Hall, but it's just very, it's very limited. I know there was a virtual reality gaming place in St. Catherine, but I don't know if it's just because of COVID, but when I went over to Sovereign, they were closed. So, I mean, obviously with COVID and everything, but it looked like they were closed, closed, like furniture was out, they were gone. Um, but yeah, so that's the only difference, just that America has more things that you can do, a much larger variety and option of things that you can enhance your social life with compared to Jamaica, but on the same end, they're very similar. Um, and then also travel, cause that fits into your social life. So you can do interstate travel and international travel and that's both within Jamaica where people travel from different different parishes like I can come from uh, St. Catherine and go to Negril for the weekend and you know that's traveling that's that's tourism that's local travel. I can also come from Jamaica and fly out to let's say Italy that's also traveling and so I feel like that's very accessible that's something that both Jamaicans and Americans do. Uh, Americans, it uh, is easier to do interstate travel and feel like you're in a completely different place because the New York City atmosphere versus the LA atmosphere is completely different. And the, the people are literally very different type of individuals. But when you travel from, let's say, Portland to Nigeria, like there's something that you're gonna relate to that person with. And you know, this Jamaican sense of you know, I'm Jamaican, you're Jamaican, we were, yeah, we're on different parts of the islands, but we're very similar types of people, you get, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what I mean. But other than that, traveling is very much the same. You do it here and abroad for both countries. Work. So the accessibility to jobs might be very, it's not might be, it is very different. It's much, 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 much more accessible to Americans to find a job and to find an okay paying job, especially if you have a degree or multiple degrees, it's gonna be very, very easy for you. In Jamaica, they're so, I don't know, like you can go to multiple different job websites and people are always hiring, but it's, people are always not getting jobs and complaining about not getting jobs, at least for the individuals that I know. So jobs and the quality of jobs are much more accessible in America than Jamaica. The pay and income per family obviously is very different. It's higher in America than it is in Jamaica, but so is the cost of living. So I always wanna throw out that as well. The cost of living in America is much higher. The cost of living in Jamaica is much lower. So obviously it's gonna be lower cost of living, lower wages, higher cost of living, higher wages, they kind of balance each other out, but they're very different in the two countries. Ah, the work community. The work community in Jamaica is uh, very similar and very different than America. They both, you know, have their community groups and their friends. Everyone has their little friends at work, you know, your work friend that you go over in the corner and be like, I hate this place. And they laugh about it together, or I love this place. And they laugh about it together. So both countries have that. But what I'd say is from experience and from what I've experienced in a lot of the companies and institutions in Jamaica, the training is very poor. I'm gonna tell you that very much. The training is very poor. And I'm not talking about training when it comes to what you're doing, because obviously they're gonna train on that. They're gonna have a lot of training on that. But when it comes to how people interact with one another, how they interact with customers, 
for the most part it's very poor in jamaica and it's very pushed in america to always please the customer and you don't always have to say customer is always right that's a good notion to have but from what i've seen when i worked in certain places in america it's like you're yeah customers are always right but if you're wrong you're wrong and we're not going to disrespect you and telling you that you're wrong but we will let you know and i really like companies more that do that there are obviously companies in america that don't do that and that are rude just the same way but i've noticed that it's a much higher possibility for people to just be overall rude to customers and just have a weird interaction in their social exchange between co-workers in jamaica so the fourth one is driving as you can see i'm pretty sure they've been popping up on the screen right so the first one in driving is different sides of the road that's the most notorious thing that people remember unfortunately a lot of people and this happens in jamaica with the tourists uh and just foreigners in general that sometimes some people might forget if you're not coming from the uk or a country that drives on the left they might switch over to the right and boom accident so that's why i say this one's very notorious uh and people always ask me do you forget to drive on the right side of the road no i kind of just turn it on in my head i'm like listen in the u.s they drive on the right side in jamaica they drive on the left so the driving etiquette in jamaica is completely different from the driving etiquette in america in america a lot of people you will see follow more by the rules of the road because the police is there trust me and i don't know i don't see much people breaking the stop sign in america i see them do like the little pull up okay pause and go they don't do like a good four seconds or five seconds but they do stop in jamaica people blatantly drive through the stop sign a police could even be coming and they blatantly drive right through it uh another thing is what's very cool in jamaica is you know somebody will give a lie meaning if you're trying to intersect something or like a lane or whatever or turning into a parking lot someone will give a lie they'll stop and allow you to go or they slow down and allow you to go in america it's like no that's not the rules of the road i don't have to do that i'm not doing it <laughs> so yeah another thing too um i think that really sums it up a lot of jamaicans just don't follow the rules of the road they don't signal oftentimes a lot of beeping you can't really do a lot of beeping in america and I, I mean unless you're in traffic and you're in some huge metropolitan city people aren't gonna beep just because you do something stupid on the road you know they're gonna road rage and cuss you out in their car and flick you off and do all this extra stuff and you know this razzle dazzle and this blah 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 from the safety of the car but they're not gonna beep you they're not gonna sometimes though i'm not gonna lie to you there are some terrible cases in america where people let their road rage get the best of them so i'd say road rage in america is far worse than it is in jamaica so road rage in america is crazy i'm telling you in jamaica they'll cuss you out and then tell if we're gonna do this and that and all them something about trust and believe everybody i got him yelled at the end of the night so the next one is policing of the roads jamaican police officers in a once in a blue moon you'll see them actually policing of the roads they'll be checking speed and all these extra things but when it comes to <coughs> sorry i'm really thirsty when it comes to actual rules of the road and things that they should like you know running a stop sign which i keep bringing up but they don't really police that much american police officers police too much I'm gonna tell you that they're so intimidating like a police officer you could be driving like i don't know you could be driving like you wrote the the book on um road traffic or something like you could be driving like the priest like clean crisp nice and a police officer will pull up behind you and you immediately feel this like what the heck what, what did i do wrong like am i doing something as a blinker because they're so intimidating they over police they over police way too much and unfortunately for people that are black that over policing leads to a lot of traumatic experiences yeah i don't want to go into saying any word that youtube might ban me for but um or not ban but they they're a little bit iffy and i don't want to shock anybody so public transport in jamaica versus in the u.s so obviously you have your taxis and your buses in jamaica and that's basically it 
but in america you have taxis buses all these extra things as well cabs i should say taxi cab whatever but the metro in america boy i'm telling you the metro is nice because you can also have the underground metro which is the subway in new york city but for places that were smaller we just said the metro um the subway very intricate very cool buffalo we only had like one straight line underneath but it made traveling throughout the city so much easier more cost effective in jamaica it is definitely very cost effective but we have to take like one taxi to here to here to here um but not really because then you can also call your taxi and you know request uh, like a solo or whatever they call it and that's also very much cheaper than the taxes that they have in america yes there's uber now in america as well but i feel like jamaica is doing a very good job at just the regular taxis to be honest because how can you beat 100 dollars taxi fare from Duane park to half a tree even if you had that in america let's drag that in america that distance that offer you'd be probably paying like 20 dollars 20 us dollars i said um three thousand um jamaican dollars to or three thousand um yeah twenty something <laughs> that's how much you'd be paying and it's a lot more so i say that one is a big difference but listen if you have to take public transport you're gonna have to make it work and that's both in jamaica and america because what else you're gonna do right yeah and they're both very popular so in america and jamaica public transport is very popular number five is people because i know a lot of you would like to hear similarities and differences but i wrote it down right here everybody is different I haven't met everybody in Jamaica and I haven't met everybody in the United States. So I can't tell you these type of people are da da da. But I definitely say Jamaican people are a lot more laid back. Um, you know, everywhere Americans go, they kind of have a bad rep. Oh, that's the American, you know? Uh, so in when you go somewhere else, I, I guess this is more public opinion than on the person themselves. But if you go somewhere and they're like, oh, I'm Jamaican, then boom, you get a lot of love. You get, oh, Bob Marley, you get Usain Bolt, you get, oh, I like jerk chicken. <laughs> you get all these things. People try to relate to you. But when you go abroad, trust me, when you go abroad, I've seen it and I've heard it and I've experienced it. Not, I wasn't even American, but I went to Canada and they're like, where's the American? And I'm like, who, who is she talking to? Who is she talking to? Who is she talking to? Because she don't know me. Um, but Americans do, for the most part, when they travel and based on public opinion, just don't have that bit of a reputation. So, <laughs> similarities, differences, you know. Uh, yeah, so that's it. I don't want to get into detail about anything else because I don't know everybody on these two places. So, obviously, the size, Jamaica is much smaller than the United States of America that's just a given we can all see it we've all experienced it <laughs> number seven is politics so in america there's a constitutional based federal republic presidential system in jamaica there's a constitutional parliamentary system so basically what that's saying is that in um obviously both areas both countries vote and elect their representatives and their leaders but in America, you have more of a republic. Again, I'm not going to go into very much detail on all of these. Please go into Google. Please go down into my description box. Highlight the part that you want to highlight. Go into Google. Pop it into Google and search. And from there, you're set to find all the information that you need. Um, but yeah, Jamaica is parliamentary. America is a presidential republic system. Number two, both have three branches of government. So that's a similarity, the legislative, the executive, and the judicial. So the difference is um, for, the, for, for America, there's a president, and then you have, you know, obviously your house and your senate, and then you have your Supreme Court. And for Jamaica, you have your head of state, you have your head of government, which is um the your head of government, which is the prime minister. The head of state, um, I can't remember, I'm gonna put it in right now. I'm just having a brain fart. <laughs> I'm gonna put it in. That's the head of state for Jamaica. Uh and then you have uh, you know your um parliament 
and you have your Supreme Courts as well. Um, elections, both are very lively, but it's very different in each country. So Jamaica, you'll have people partying, blowing their horn, living a good life, etc., etc. But in America, you have people more forming lines and, you know, just, yeah, just like that. They're just very calm people. <laughs> so it's very two different type of um, elections, but they're both democratic elections and we would all hope that they're both fair elections. Now we're going to go into health care, which is number eight. Healthcare, I believe, is a little bit much better in the U.S. based on the actual service of the care you're going to get. American institutions um, where you get your doc your doctor's degree and all these extra stuff, depending on whatever field you're in, you will have uh, a lot more research-based knowledge, so you're always up to date on the new things going on. Um, Jamaica, they most likely have you know a lot of great researchers and all this extra stuff but it's just very different and i don't want to come off as biased or anything or that i'm judging jamaica but this is just this is just the facts um you're obviously depending on whichever doctor you get you might get a doctor in america and receive terrible care or you may get a doctor in america and receive great care and vice versa so that's just based on it, your individual experience but overall um, the equipment and all these things in America are just going to be better quality. Yeah, but when it comes to paying, I think Jamaica has a more affordable healthcare system. America has multiple different healthcare systems. So, and you can have insurance, uh, which is a benefit both countries you have insurance. So that will obviously make it better and easier for you to, you know, pay for things. But trust me, if you don't have healthcare in America and something happens to your dog, name yourself because man, yeah, tell it like you're gonna get better, God willing. But your bank account, girl, like a people that forever, like <laughs> it's not that expensive to some degree, depending on your illness. But it, it can be very expensive versus when you come down to Jamaica or even when you go to the UK, you know, or when you live in these countries, I should say. It's just going to be, if you're sick and something happens, the worst thing is that you're not going to have the best of research if it's something like that they've never heard of before. It's going to be like, well, we're just going to have to figure this out, like, <laughs> hopefully. But you're gonna be able to somewhat afford it, you know, it not really kill you in the bank account region. But anyways, the last couple ones I'm gonna to touch on is climate. So depending on where you are in Jamaica, it's pretty much one season. <laughs> I tell you, it's pretty much one season. But obviously you have rain season, hurricane season, you have your dry seasons. Um, but in America, you literally, depending on where you are, because other places you can have one season as well. But if you're in a place where you experience all four seasons, you have winter, you have summer, you have spring, and you have fall, baby girl. You are living the good life. I know I'm good on winter. Everybody else can go on. Fall is actually really nice because it's just a little bit cooler. I love summer because Jamaica, for the most part, is always summer. I love summer. But winter, winter is cute for two days, and then it can go. But yeah. Uh, hurricane season. Yeah, talks about that. Dry season. And the thing now, um, similarities and differences between classism and racism. The difference within, between uh, Jamaica and America is that Jamaica experienced a lot more classism than they do, and colorism, than they do racism, which in America, racism is prevalent. Um, but since, for the most part, Jamaica is a very diverse country, but we look at it as we're all Jamaicans. In America, like, people say, you're Caucasian, I'm... African American, I'm Asian, I'm I'm Indian American. Uh, in Jamaica, the most you'll see people say, "Oh, me coolie and you know Chinese and black." You know them type of something. But people really take it to heart when they do the racism thing. They're they're very. A lot of people are very racist. But in Jamaica, colorism is a very huge thing. Colorism is a huge thing in America as well, but more so in the black community. Yeah. And then classism. Classism is huge and people like to people like to deny that it exists and when they do accept that it exists, they kind of downplay it. So that's very yeah, that's where we are with that. And then woo, 
Number 11, it's basically the cell phone system credit versus paying for your phone on a monthly basis, which a lot of people normally do in America. You pay for your phone, whether it be from T-Mobile, Sprint, um, Amazon, not Amazon, Verizon, sorry, or I'm trying to think. You can even go to, um, there's this one place. You can even go to, it's gonna pop up on the screen because a lot of people can go to one of these places. <laughs> um, but in America, you buy credit, like either you have, in Jamaica, either you have Digicel or you have Flow, but you're paying for credit. And when your credit's done, like, <sighs> when your credit done, you're gonna have no service, dog, yum, you're super. Because if you're dead, that's not what I meant to say. If your car is dead, if I want back credit, I have no credit, no sir, no um, please no service. Make use of please call me, uh, make use of please call me, or just lock up and wait until morning. I swear to you. <laughs> but for the most part, yeah, in Germany, in America though, and this is from my experience, guys. Um, even if my unlimited, that's what they love to say, but it's not really unlimited. But even if my unlimited um, plan runs out of data in America, I can still go on WhatsApp. Granted, it's going to take forever to load, but, and I go on Instagram, but it's going to be real slow. It's not going to be done. And in Jamaica, when it's done, it's done. <laughs> but yeah, those are my curated list. So just to recap, we have school, social life, work, driving, people, size, politics, healthcare, climate, classism, racism, credit for phone versus paying for monthly phone fee. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to take this laptop off my lap. I really hope y'all enjoyed that video. So make sure you like, comment down below, subscribe for more. Let's please have some constructive comments in the comment section and let's talk about how my list was very amazing or how it was terrible. <laughs> and then if you have more to add to the list, then leave that down below. Have a great morning, noon, or night. Bye guys. Thank you so much for watching. Merry little Christmas.